Welcome to Voices from the Bench, a dental laboratory podcast. Send us an email at info at voicesfromthebench.com or look for us on Facebook at Voices from the Bench. Greetings and welcome to Voices from the Bench. We are at episode number 89. My name is Elvis. My name is Barbara. Merry Christmas, everybody. I'm in a festive mood. Sorry. Are you? Well, you did just have the night dental Christmas party the other night. We had it last night and everybody survived and it was a very, very fun time like it always is. And I spent the day decorating my house and getting festive and I'm just, I'm going to make fudge later and I'm making soup now. Oh my God, I don't know what's happening to me, but it's fun. Yeah, holy moly. <laughs> You are so domesticated right now. I What's know, going on? No, I don't know, <laughs> but it's fun. I love it. I should send you up some of my fudge. It's white chocolate and it's beautiful and yummy. Nice. No calories though, not at all. Of course. It's free. Magic fudge. <laughs> I saw that you guys had your Christmas party outside. That must be nice. It was. It was like 60 degrees. It was beautiful. I mean, it was just perfect weather. We had a DJ and tables and food. And I was the bartender, of course, which, you know, I actually think that that could be another career for me. I enjoy uh, um, serving people. So it was fun. That's awesome. We get to do ours this week and the usual steak place. Cool. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Yeah. Enjoy. We can't do it outside here. It's going to be uh, pretty cold this week. So, uh, How cold? What is cold there? I know what cold is here, but what's cold there? This Wednesday, we're supposed to have a high of 22. Nice. Double twos. Okay. Yeah. That's a high. <laughs> that's that's the peak of so our sorry. greatness. So. so sorry. <laughs> we're happy when it gets 50. We feel like everybody brings out their boots and coats and scarves when it's 50. That's pretty bad. Yeah, we still are wearing shorts at 50. Yeah, I'm sure you are. (laughs) That's awesome. So back in October, Barb and I got to go to Lab Day East in Philadelphia. It was my first time, but you've been there before, right? Yes, I did a presentation with the tables, and there was four of us, and it was amazing. That was a couple years ago. I loved it, though. I was actually in um, Jersey at the time. So Philadelphia was amazing. It was our first time there, and I really, really, really enjoyed the meeting. It's awesome. Yeah, the great people at LMT allowed us to set up and record some of the amazing people that attended this East Side convention. Yep. It was like a Chicago light, but it was more intimate and was nice to meet so many people that might not make it to Chicago. One person that was speaking for the Preet Corporation was going to be there, and we wanted to make sure that we got him on the pod. (laughs) We almost missed him. As he was one of our last conversations we recorded. Yep, but you hunted him down. You're amazing. The big beard, he camouflaged (laughs) behind it. (laughs) Jeremiah Noss has been on the podcast way back on episodes 30 and 31. That's like October of last year. And he was on with his wife, Amanda. We initially had the bond to talk about being a husband and wife team in a lab that featured metal framework. Yes, I recall. They talked about having a lab in Florida, and that's when we found out that Jeremiah just signed up for denturism school. Mm-hmm. So fast forward almost a year later, and we catch up with Jeremiah to update us on the Noss family and to talk more about his journey to becoming a denturist. Nano ceramic is the new buzzword in full arch dentistry, and for a good reason. But what exactly is nano ceramic? If you're like me, you might be wondering. A nano ceramic is an advanced restorative material that blends ciliated glass and a polymer matrix together at the molecular or nano level. Ciliated glass drives the superior aesthetics and durability of this material and the advanced polymer fibers drive the elasticity and lifelike feel. Blended at the perfect ratio, the glass and polymer matrix creates the ideal combination of lifelike functionality and long-term durability. Crystal Ultra by Digital Dental is comprised of 70% ciliated glass and 30% advanced polymers. This 70-30 mix is the magic that makes Crystal Ultra the ideal material for full arch dentistry, creating the perfect mix of durability and high aesthetics. In combination with the semi-flexible bar structure, 
a Crystal Ultra based fixed hybrid denture is the most beautiful and durable full arch restoration in the industry, period. To learn more about the future of full arch dentistry, visit crystalultra.com slash voices. Crystal Ultra, feel the difference. Voices from the Bench. The Interview. So, <laughs> is it going to get shaved? Uh-huh. I'm yeah. Gonna sh- I'm going to take off about that much. That's it? <laughs> so, yeah, you know, I was sitting there making all my impressions for my uh, schooling. I had about 20 impressions or so to make from my mouth, and I'm sitting there trying to stir up my alginate and realizing oh. that I'm just stirring my beard <laughs> right into the alginate, you know? <laughs> I've done a couple of wax try-ins with some patients and stuff. And they're like, can you get your hair out of my nose, please? <laughs> so, yeah, it's a, it, it's a it's time. Qu- quickly, quickly becoming obvious that yeah. it's going to have to get trimmed down. Yeah. So, hey, we are excited to have back past podcast guest yeah. Jeremiah Noss, CDT. Oh, you still, you still call it Everness. Inverness. Inverness. Yeah. They, Even though you're not in the town anymore. Yes. Actually, we left the business even though the business is the same. Cool. Um, nice. We figured that it was the least controversial moving into Maine up there, and we don't have to really have to worry about anyone else stealing my name. So here's the thing. When you were on the podcast, you and Amanda were talking about you going to... West Coast? Colorado? Oregon. Oregon. Oregon, Oregon. Oregon yeah. yes. What happened? Well, we actually flew over there and drove around all of south, southwest Oregon and you know, kind of quickly realized how expensive it was to live yeah. there kind of crazy expensive we kept looking for what we called the unicorn which was a one-stop location for us so someone's denturist business that had a residence attached to it and uh, had a laboratory yep. attached to it yeah because what we found over there was by the time i was going to have to rent a residential location then go rent a commercial location the expense on it was just oh crazy. it's huge yeah crazy especially just trying to get started you know it's, it just it was too much so we actually flew back to florida and honestly we were still going to head out there and uh, Patrick Allen. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Past me and, podcaster yeah. as well. <laughs> yep. He actually just got uh, awarded the uh, Dinturist of the I Year. I saw award. that. Yes. Good for him. He yeah. well deserved. He did. Well yes. deserved. Very well deserved. So me and him had started working together pretty about two or three years prior to this. And I started making all of his frameworks for him along with most of the or at least a lot of the other Dinturists up here in Maine. We got talking one time about life and stresses and family and this and that. And he goes, he was explaining to me how he has his second location. And it's just driving him crazy to try to continue operating it and his main location. I mean, I've watched this man work now for a long time. And he's quite often up until 2 or 3 in the morning. Yeah. Legitimately trying to get the work done for the patients coming in the following day. You mm. mean, he's Because it's still just him and, and his, his wife. wife. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And so they're trying to run their main location in Bangor. And this other location down in Waterville. Hmm. And he just was feeling similar to me, I think, and just feeling overwhelmed with the amount of things you're trying to get done and accomplish and and, and make this this worthwhile. So he had kind of made what I knew was a joke comment at the time. But he's like, man, he goes, if you came up here, I I just would give you that damn practice. (laughs) And, of course, he didn't give it to me. (laughs) (laughs) But it really started sparking my thinking process, me and Amanda going, why haven't we really considered living somewhere where it does snow. I mean, ultimately, that was my I big... I remember like, that was a big thing. Yeah, that, that was talked. my big thing. I wanted to be living somewhere where it didn't it snow. snow. Of course, come to find out, it snores all the way in Oregon anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. we started looking at it, started thinking about it, and my wife goes, you know what? He goes, on the day off, even in Florida, when it's 19 degrees outside or 20 degrees, he goes, I see you put on your damn snowmobile suit and boots and go fishing. Mm. She's like, so what do you care? Yeah. If it's cold, it's cold. You don't ever seem to care before, so... I started thinking about it, and I started realizing that for me, maybe it was just more of uh, uh, me being scared of a situation that I I had never experienced. Sure. You know, I'd always, as a Florida person, of course you don't want to be in snow. But why, I don't know. Yeah. I, just, I, just always, I just always told myself I never really wanted to be around snow. Yeah. So once we got rid of that aspect out of our brain or accepted it that we were cool with it, we drove, actually flew up to, actually, Maine, Maine I, I spoke for them. At their uh, Dinturist Society a couple years ago. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And at that time, it was uh, kind of gave me a little bit glimpse of what was going on there. And it really helped seal the deal, honestly, on becoming a Dinturist for one and going to Maine. Excellent. And, you know, the first one was the people that were up there talking to me. 
were very bluntly, honestly open about their financials. And I, I know that's kind of odd. You know, it is odd. You know, you don't get that a lot. Yeah. But we became pretty good friends with these people, and I just simply asked, like, li- just ask outright, hey, man, how much do you make? Yeah. Because, okay, I mean, I want to do this so I have a better life. Yeah. I don't want to move up here and go through all this just to make the same damn amount of money I was making in Florida. Yeah. yeah. You know, for what? So they, they, they opened up to me, and it was like, okay, yeah, this, this makes some sense to start charging clinical fees instead of laboratory fees. Mm. Wow. So I was like, I'm hooked with that. And then Pat brought me down to his other location and kind of looked at it and said, look at this. I got a three-bedroom, one-bath house and, you know, up top. I got a 600-square-foot, or I think it's 900-square-foot auditory for my, for my main level. And my uh, laboratory is down in the basement. See, he had your unicorn. Wow. He did. I know he did. That's exactly <laughs> he, he exactly right. did. And then at the end of the day, our mortgage is for the whole thing is less than what it would have cost to rent just a residential portion over and over. Sure. That's excellent. So Good for it's, you guys. Yeah, financially, it's been that unicorn that we were kind of looking for. And then uh, to do all this also worked out in the uh, dealings of all this, I should say, is that Pat is going to continue working at that location all the way up until the point where I'm ready to take it over. Until it's you're sweet. licensed. Exactly. So yeah. he's going to be my mentor, per se, during my externship. Mm-hmm. I got, I think it's 45 cases that are uh, specific cases. I have multiple upper and full lower dentures that have to come in the door, wow. multiple upper and lower partials that have to come in the door, an implant, repair, rebase, you know, all these different oh, so things. Oh, so you have a criteria it of like that. different yeah. type of cases, and yeah. you can't do them until the patients present. You got it. You got it. That is one of the things that makes this getting the externship done a little difficult. Mm-hmm. Uh, they do recommend, the school recommends that usually that you spread out and try to get multiple mentors for this so oh, that so you so can you go have, there exactly yeah. so so okay. if they have a situation pop in the door yeah. that's a little harder than what it sounds like because you know me and pat we had the understanding and a uh, respect for what each other do yeah um very deeply um we help each other out a lot the problem is as like i say if i try to ask uh, someone you know an hour away or whatever for some help you got to be a pretty good friend because at the end of the day, I'm going to make that product, but they're going to have to deal with the aftercare yep. of the product that I made. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there is a little bit of a difficulty in, in, in finding that right person who will kind of coach you. I think for Pat, it was a little bit of a unicorn for him too maybe because He now, was stressed. And, well, that, yeah. but the patients that I see that I'm making my own products for now, they're going to be my patients. Eventually, yeah. Eventually. So mm-hmm. he doesn't have to deal with, hey, look, yeah. you know, this first entry you made back in the day, this piece of shit. <laughs> uh, you know, and, and it has to be remade, but that'll be on me. It's yeah. your problem. That'll be, yeah. that'll be my problem. It won't yeah. be his cost. It mm-hmm. won't be him, his, his anything. So I really think that, or I really hope at least, that that aspect of it adds some comfort to him in the situation, you know, pulling me into more situations and more situations at that location because he knows at the end of the day, everyone that came in that door is going to be, you know, too. kind of be looking you know, toward cool. me in the beginning. So you have criteria for the cases. Do you have to photograph them? Do you have to present them? There's 45 cases. That's yep. a lot. Yeah, so. and there's a lot of documentation, yeah. a lot of, you know, think about it. It's, it's, it's an online school. So how would you show someone at the end of the day that you followed the protocol mm-hmm. properly, that you did all the documentation properly, that you did your oral exam properly? You know, you have to somehow you know, express and show these people mm-hmm. that. So, yeah, there's a lot of photos that happen. Just a lot of documentation on our part about, you know, the dates of what happened. Just they want to see legitimately as you would have been done normally. Absolutely. Yeah, one would and hope. do you pass them as you go or do you do 45 at once or do you just have From you what I understand, I can turn them in all at once if I want to. But, of course, you that would be. It. I, I would want as I. Yeah, I don't want it. That, that's to too much it. organization for yeah. me. I'll get one done and send it off and, <laughs> okay. and not worry about it. Yeah. So how much longer do you have of school? Hmm. Technically, probably only about six or seven months more. Nice. And then I get, uh, then the question becomes, when can I finalize my externship program because of completing all these scenarios? Yeah. And then at that point, really, yeah, the way I try to explain to people is it isn't like you just pay your tuition, you do this, and all of a sudden, boom, you're a, a denturist. All this really ever does is give me the knowledge and prepare me to go take my board exams. Mm-hmm. Oh. Okay. okay. So, so yeah, for yeah. me to go take my board exams, I have to have all this beneath my belt. But then at the end of the day, I got to go sit in front of three people with a live patient and do my thing to a live patient. And um, they get to grade me on, like, you know, like everything, you know, how you're breathing and <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> whatever yeah. they want to grade you on. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
And yeah, so yeah. at least I feel it. I'm, I'm, I'm already nervous as hell. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, you're making me nervous. I'm like, damn, that's a lot. It, it is. That's intense. You know, um, it was definitely a, a, a dedication to have to do this. Yeah. Um, I, I really feel that my biggest saving grace in this whole process is that I'm coming into it um, as an experienced technician. Yep. I am seeing that there's people that go into this gin program that uh, have never worked in the dental field on any level at all. Mm. So the challenge is, oh, God, the challenge is that they, that they have to deal with. I, I just I don't know how they do it. I don't either. Wow. I really don't. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I know with enough grit and determination, you can get through whatever you need to get through. It's definitely made, made me feel fortunate that uh, I've been in the lab business for 20 years or so. So yeah. even right now, I'm on my portion where I'm setting up teeth. Mm-hmm. I got 20 cases, 20 upper and lowers to set. And um, other people I've heard are freaking out online about it <laughs> yeah, and yeah. really having a hard time about it. And I sat down a little while ago, and I think I blew out four in you know, an afternoon. Sure. And I was like, this is no big deal. Yeah. You know, yeah, because yeah. I have 20 years of experience. Confidence. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and they give you the most ideal situations. It's ridiculous. I mean, yeah. they, 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 they provide you the teeth. You got all the room in the world. You could, I mean, you don't have to grind on a tooth at all. Oh, nice. Uh, so <laughs> they want to understand. We know you. real world. That's not going to Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. No. I mean, so. But so I, I feel tremendously fortunate in, in, in that realm to be able to have that backing of knowledge. Sure. How have you handled the school part of it? Because I know you were quite concerned about Because when last time we talked to you, I think you just got your books. Yeah. And you were like, holy schmoly. Some courses have sucked. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I mean, I've done pretty good. i got A's and B's in all my courses. But uh, pathology, Ooh. that was an eye-opener. Yeah. Histology was an eye-opener. There were a couple that uh, I'm not. They were you know, obviously I got A's and B's in them. Yeah. So, I mean they're doable, but it's it is significant sometimes. Sure, I, I, I got a couple courses this time, where uh, one course is a book that's 141 pages long. Okay, my other book is uh, med- about medical emergencies. Yeah. So that's really interesting right now. But I'll have uh, one week where I have to read 112 pages. Oh. <laughs> In that one book, you know, for that one week, <laughs> you know. And you're like, this is not. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and then I have another course over here that has this little tiny book that I only got to read like 10 pages, <laughs> you know. So it's balancing it. You know, at the end of the day, if you're willing to put the time and effort into yeah. it. It's all about what you go into it with. Exactly. Absolutely. I mean, there's nothing here that I felt was a, such a challenge that I had to really stress over it. Sure. Yeah. It was one of those things. You just do your reading. You do your work. Yep. And you're going to be fine. Yep. But, yeah, so the book work has been. Just fine, to be yeah, honest good. with you. It's it's still something where I'm, even now, I was supposed to, <laughs> I'm probably going to get bad grades, grades this week. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm hoping they'll give me some grace because I was speaking. Yeah, yeah. And, as they you know, should. You know, you know, <laughs> you're here representing. That's yep. right. That's right. But uh, We have proof if you need it. <laughs> but I have to do uh, like like weekly discussion quiz. I mean, uh, these discussion posts where you have to stay online and technically mm-hmm. I'm supposed to have one in by last Wednesday, which I didn't do. And uh, I got to go home, fly in tomorrow, and then read the hundred and something more of that pages of, of yeah. that medical emergency book so I can take my test. Cause, yeah. Because I have a test due um, every Sunday. You're not going to read that book while you're on the plane, making that person I next can't. to you real nervous? I can't. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a good emergency. idea. <laughs> that would be a good idea. I can't read on a plane. I, 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 like I, I mean, I suck flying. Do you? Yeah, yeah. I try. I try to even watch movies sometimes, but I get... Just my, my head just yeah, doesn't deal right. Yeah, some people don't. Some people can't. My wife can't fly. I mean, she I freaks sleep. out over it. Yeah, really? I yeah. deal with it. I've gotten yeah. pretty good. I used to almost freaking throw up on every flight. Yeah. And now I've gotten to the point where I can control all that just fine, but I still want my feet on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. You picked up your lab in Florida, and you still are running this lab in Maine. Correct. Did you lose any business? Absolutely. You? Yeah. Yeah? You know, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Wow. You know, I'll, I'll, we knew we would. We, you know, we had still spent however many years really focusing on trying to get local non-local work. oh okay okay i tried to get work from these different prosthodontists from here to there knowing that i would be nothing more but than a mailing address sure so it wouldn't matter exactly uh we definitely knew that most of my local demographic dentists down there were very medicaid insurance based doctors and that they darn near weren't willing to use me because of my lab fees as it was let alone having that extra expense in shipping and time. Yeah. yeah. They just, there, there was no need for them to do that. If I was yeah. them, I wouldn't have done sure. it. Sure. You know? So right now we're, we definitely lost some work. We definitely have gained a couple of people since we've moved. And you've been able to increase your fees as well, like you were saying, right? To a point, yeah. I mean, I've kind of left most of my fees alone. Right now it's this weird transition for us where, I know this kind of sounds bad, but I don't want new clients so much right now. 
Right, if you got enough work plus school. Well, yeah. it's not even that I really honestly have enough work. I could use more work. But the problem is, is how do I tell some new client that I just got six months from now that I'm sorry, I'm not willing to do your work anymore because, oh. because I'm seeing patients. Mm -hmm. So That's I don't know how to smart. balance that. It, it, it's, it's been yeah. a, a challenge. I think me and my wife have come to the conclusion that we're just going to keep scraping by until I can start seeing patients full time. Yeah. Uh, I just don't feel that it's right for me to start providing you know, our work to some client and then all of a sudden... Six months down the line, go. I'm sorry, you're on your own now. Yeah, yeah. I get that. That's it's called integrity. That's yeah, that's, yeah. That's so awesome. that's a lot about character. Mm -hmm. And then we already, I mean, we already don't know what to do because there's already a lot of insurers out there that uh, use us for frameworks. So I've already told them, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, start seeing patients. Those are mine. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Either please send me all your <laughs> partial patients, or you're going to have to probably find a new lab to use. Wow. Uh, because I'm. Unless you want to pay my clinical fees for your partials. What about that guy you hired that was going to move out to Oregon with you? Did he go to Maine? No, long story. Yeah. Um, no, he ended up tapping out and deciding that he didn't want to do any of it. Really? Wow. Yeah. Um, it was, uh, you know, it is what it is. I wish him the best. Y you know, he's living his life. Yeah. It seems like to me that you have six months to teach your framework skill to somebody uh -uh. else. No? I don't want any more employees ever. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 despise employees yeah. 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 Um, i think you mentioned that before too yeah <laughs> yeah um, my wife thing. i just don't want to deal with it i don't want to be totally engrossed in what i'm making or my patient uh, that process is what i need to be in i don't need to be over here trying to correct you or deal with your mistakes and i've done all that for so long that i just i'm just not willing to do it anymore so you're looking to Good. follow patrick's business model correct. of being the only guy yep 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 not a uh, Todd Young. Well, Todd, Todd. Todd Young has a practice that yes. is just like, you know, it's banging. It's yes. huge. Yeah. Yeah, I believe he has two or three dentists working for him, mm -hmm. some hygienists. He has a GP. A dentist. Yep, yeah. He, yep. 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 He has a GP that comes in, I think, twice a month. You want to lean it toward more towards the Patrick Allen yes. business model. I still ultimately am very much contemplating how, having a GP there uh, once or twice a month. I don't really know what that teamwork yeah. view will be down the road. I kind of feel right now that it'll be either a young guy coming out of school that is willing to partner up a little bit and kind of make a little extra money on the yeah, side yeah. a couple of days a week or you know, a couple of days a month, or the old retired guy yeah. that still loves That's what he does but just wants to work a little bit. Dialing, Slow down dialing a little bit. Dialing down, sure. and, and, and then that way I can have everything right in one area. Yeah. There is a little bit of a an open concern between all of us insurers that it does happen where, let's say, if I get a partial case coming in and I need some tooth preparations done. It's not that uncommon for, for that patient to go to a dentist and then have that dentist go, I don't know why you're going over there. Yeah. We do all that. Yeah, oh, yeah. We do all that right here. Oh, yeah. and, you know, and we can take care of your, you know, your hygiene. We can oh. take care of your kids. We yeah. can do all of that. We can roll right it all into one insurance. You yeah. got yeah. it. You got yeah. it. So yeah. that aspect does happen up there. Um, so I think ultimately, like I said, I'm that control freak. And so I want. I want it there. Thing. I want it there. It's a very confusing thought process right now about sure. where our future is going to be. We try to just kind of take it for what it is and see where it goes. It's also very exciting, too. Oh, okay. it, is. Yes. it is, but it's also very nerve-wracking. I watch yeah. a lot of these insurers have a tremendously hard time balancing the time between seeing patients and then creating the products. Yeah. Or what they decided to do is simply not create the products anymore and just see it, patients. And just see patients. And there's nothing wrong with either one of those. I am in this mindset right now where I need to create my own products in full for my own patients. Now, I've also heard that give myself 12 months from doing that, and I'm no longer going to create my own frameworks. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's, that seems very foreign to me right now. But I understand their, their perspective. I mean, me, my ability to make more money off the you know, new patient coming in the door. It's and chairs, man. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's terrible to We're think. We're going to have to bleep you out. It's terrible to think wow. that way, but it's true. true. How it's you true, grow the, the money, the I mean. Yeah, so, and terrible. that's where I am. And there is a cap for what you can charge for a partial. There is a cap sure. for what you can charge for a denture. No matter where you're at, whatever that number it is, it is mm -hmm. balancing that out, figuring that out. Because I would love to simply to say, oh, no, I'm going to keep jacking up my prices until I just make it affordable for me to make my own frameworks. Yeah. But at that point. You lose patience. Yeah. Or may yeah. Use a, a, may, maybe lose enough of them until I just don't even have the business walking in the door. Yeah. So we're open to what needs to happen and, and what could happen. But we're starting off with the idea of that uh, I've always had this dream of making my own stuff and being in control of my own situations. Yeah. Yeah. 
What's Amanda going to do? Run the front? Absolutely. She, oh, yeah. she, she's going to do what you know, she's always done now, which is run the business. Yeah. I mean, I try to tell people all that. I can't do anything that, that she does or very, very little of it, if any, um, but could do nothing of our business running without her. Sure. Yeah, to make a great team. Yeah, I'm focused in on what I'm doing and what I'm creating. I don't even know about profit yeah. and loss statements or profit margins. I look at my wife going, can I buy this? And she goes, uh-huh. <laughs> and I go, awesome, you know, or no, we can't right now. So I just don't even want to concern myself yeah. with that aspect. It's good yeah. that you have that. It's great. It's a partnership. Partner. Oh, it's, yeah. had it not been for her, there's no way we could Is have. Is she doing any research into looking into how more, like, front office works? or Well, you know, the same way that I'm kind or? of um, partnering up with Alan to do my externship with him. She's kind of, you know, obviously she's not, she's not in school, but she's kind of partnering up with Erica. Good for her. And Which is his wife. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. And let Erica kind of. Uh, That's he, cool. Yeah. Walk yeah. her through the ropes, show her stuff. Because we're, we, we're so newbies to this, to be honest with you. I mean, I don't even know what dental software or what patient software, yeah, know, yeah. you know, is used for this kind of stuff. But I don't even want to have to know, <laughs> you know. I want her to figure that out. And she will. And she'll be great at it. Yeah. She's one of my Facebook friends after we interviewed oh, you guys. Yeah. It seems like you guys are going all over, traveling around, checking it out, really happy. It seems like you're settling right in. I appreciate it. So, We're trying to. Yeah. We're trying to get the kids out there. How so do the boys like Maine? Uh, they love it yeah. right yeah, now. I'm sure. Uh, yeah. my, you know, my eldest, Jack, he, um, he had probably the hardest time. Out of both of my boys and everything. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so now that he has his own new group of friends, and he's my social butterfly. Yeah. He yeah. has to be involved with people and, and, feel, in, and, and feel engaged. Mm-hmm. So now that he's friendly now with multiple Good friends around the school and this and that, I think it, it's all been just fine. Good sure. My littlest one, Jake, he's a very independent soul. He's a very artistic-minded person. He's fine grabbing a box of crayons. Going in the corner yeah. and just being there for six hours. Yeah. <laughs> so it's funny how different they are, isn't it? Really, it really Jeez. is crazy. But he's the one right now that he wakes up every morning and goes, is it going to snow today? Is it <laughs> he's snow excited. Today? Yeah, he's oh, very right. excited about the snow. Oh, heck yeah. Wait till he has a snow day. Exactly. Yeah. It's the greatest wow. day of his life. <laughs> oh, I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it a bit. Well, that's awesome. I yeah. love hearing your guys' story. I think it's amazing that you guys are able to uproot, to follow this passion. It's so raw and true. I love it, man. I appreciate it. It's it's been it. a if you if you name an emotion, it's been that. Yeah. I mean, it's been just everything from such an amazing experience and happy as could be to why what did, did we do we this? Do? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. To, to can we you know can we continue to? I mean, so it's just been constant. I feel like we've you know we we were established and settled, <laughs> and now I'm starting over, but not really. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's it's just this thing where we have to constantly talk with each other and uh you know there's days where i need to be the uh the mental stronghold yeah and there's days that she needs to be that mental stronghold yeah because there's there's a lot of times where we talked about a little while ago where sometimes when things get slow you know you know she she worries this or she worries that she's expressing all that to me and i go yeah i you know i worry too you know it's just my hands creating all the work mm-hmm. you know what if it was my hands that screwed something up recently you know and i'm pissing all my accounts off and yeah and so it's there is that constant expression of worry and how to deal with each other's emotions. Mm-hmm. It is not easy, you know, especially having our kids there 24-7 now. It's kind of great, but also it's also very – I get it. Very, Another element. You just don't get yeah. a break. Yeah. yeah. You know, you, you know yeah. we just don't get that break. Another element. So, yeah, yeah before when, when we were down in Florida, I had my daughter also, who's actually still in Florida, she actually just got accepted into the pharmacy program at nice. the USL. That's yeah, a good awesome program. To get into. So, but when we were in Florida, she lived with us. Yeah. So me and my wife wanted to get away. We just, hey Tara, watch the kids. You You're the watching kids? the kids. <laughs> you don't have all, that. Yeah, all day. Nice. I mean, she was great. So now, yeah, now it's just us. And and uh, like I said there's just great things about it, and not so great things about it. Well, I think you'll find that a lot of technicians are extremely jealous of what you're doing. You know, it's, it's, there's no reason to be. There's really not. I wish more people would start running numbers a little bit in their own brain. I talked a little bit this morning during the lecture about one of the biggest keys that me and Amanda figured out that made us want to do this was that, you know, you, you can only work so much. Mm-hmm. You know, you, I mean, I don't care if it's an 80, 90 hour a week. You can do it. But then what you need to do is look at your numbers at the end of that week. Is it worth it? Yeah. Well, is it worth it? But you're never going to make any more than that if you don't change because you've already worked the, 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 the max amount that you can. You can't physically do any more. So whatever that product number is, that's your ceiling. I get it. 
<laughs> so for me, it was like we recognize that and go, yeah, yeah, geez. But here's an option, an available option to go out there, darn near triple my fees or more, and start working with the patients and start trying to back off working so much. Yep. So hopefully, like I said, we don't, we don't want to be rich. It would be great and cool. But at yeah. the end of the day, all we really want is to make a decent living and provide more time with our family. Yeah. Hey, if that's in a priority to you, then that's yeah. that's a goal. That's you know. Excellent. Absolutely. No, we try to tell everyone. I try to keep telling them that, you know, even in the lecture this morning, that I think this industry has this mindset that if you're going to be successful, you have to grow into a bigger laboratory. You have to hire more employees. You have to do more products. You got to buy more mills. <laughs> exactly. Or you know, you have to get involved in this, or you're just not going to be successful. Yeah. And so, what I have to try to teach my own, myself, and I'm trying to express it out there, is what is success for you? Yeah. Not what the industry that. says that it is, yeah. but if, if success for me is being able to take my kids fishing three days out of the week and be able to provide that life, then that's successful for me. I mean, that's, that is success. I don't need to be trying to make a million dollars a it's year. not a bank account number. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So that's, I think, where me and my wife have really tried to back off and say, you know what? This production life that I was raised in is not, n- it. not a problem. Well, no. I mean, it's just not for me. It's just not what you were looking for right yeah, now. Yeah. That's not, awesome. I'm not finding any success in my own life by doing that. That's great. You know, so I think that's, that, that was probably the biggest thing is we got these kids. One of them's already 10 years old. I figure I got, what, another three or four more years before he totally just gives me the oh, middle yeah. finger. Yep, he will. Yeah. <laughs> and he will. Exactly. Mine's 14 and he's there. Yeah. Like, oh. yep. So it's just like it's becoming such this thing where you know, if I don't make something happen now, I'm just going to let it ride the way it is and I'm going to regret it all. Yeah. yeah. you look back at it. Yeah. Exactly. That's so awesome. I think that's been the biggest motivator for all of us you know, making this move and everything. You know, besides making my own products and all that, which is all cool stuff. But at the end of the day, I have to spend time with my kids. You know, even Jack made me this little rubber band bracelet, and he made me promise I wouldn't take it off until I got Aww, home. And it, just, cool. and it was things like that, you know, that yep. I, I just, you know, that this, you know, this little stupid thing here probably couldn't cost six cents. Yeah. But it's just the fact that he was going to miss me to the point where, you know, yeah, and this is the cool. first show that I've been at without my wife and really without my kids. Yeah. So it's like it's even hitting harder right now that, yeah. uh, you know, this is all cool and lovely and all. But what did they miss this weekend? You know, what trip could we have gone on instead of, yeah. you know, as a family? And I'm not saying I, I regret being here or anything like that at all. Yeah, yeah. No, but I'm I just hear, saying, yeah. you know, I mean, that's it's always in my brain. Yeah. You know, how do I get more time? How, yeah. you know, what do I do to be able to do back. that? Yep. Got it. Can't I can always get, get more work. Yeah. I can always lower my prices if I wanted to and get so many same-day working. It was ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I can't get more time mm-hmm. with them. Yeah. And, uh, and once they're old, you'll have all the time in the world <laughs> to do yeah. this later. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. So, it's, you know, it's been a great thing, but it's, it's just been a very challenging thing along the way, too. Awesome. Yeah. So. Well, we want to follow up with you yeah, again when, sure. you, uh, when you're licensed and ripping and roaring, yeah. and I want to hear all about it. I think it's great. And give your I, wife our best as well. I appreciate Absolutely. it. Fun. Yeah, say yeah, hi thank to you. Amanda. Yeah. I definitely missed all my friends out in Vegas. Yeah. So I can't believe that you were here rolling. instead of there. Yeah. yeah, you know, Preet wanted me to speak for them here. I get it. And it was just one of those things that financially easier. Yeah, to, closer for sure. Yeah. Well, to honestly, to let, uh, you know, to let someone else financially help me be here mm-hmm. versus me basically coming out of the pocket for I everything. I get it. To we be feel Vegas. that for you. <laughs> we yeah. feel it all the time. We get that for yeah. sure. I'm yeah, sure you guys it's hard. Do. It's yeah. hard traveling a lot. It is. And uh, I've gotten to the point now with most of my lecturing and, and, and things like that that I'm really not looking to make a, you know, a, a living off lecturing. No. no. Just cover it. And just so, cover the expenses. Yep. Sure. Yeah, exactly. You know, just just, just, you just, just make it. it worth my while a yeah. little bit. And, you know, even that usually gives me the freedom to speak how I speak in front of lectures because if you don't ever want me back, that's fine too. <laughs> 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 you know? Say it like it is. You got it. Yep. You got it. We had to have a long talk about flexible partials today that was really fun for me, maybe not so much fun for everyone else. Mm. Yeah, but I, I definitely think that uh, some discussion needs to happen in our industry about products, mm-hmm. and we've gotten to the point where everyone's so afraid to say anything or to bring up an idea because it's just going to get smashed on social media yeah. or just yeah. demolished, or you know? you'll piss off a vendor. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like my lecture today. I I I give a disclaimer slide that says I'm probably going to piss someone off here today. Nice. I really don't mean it. But, you know, feel free to come up to me after the show and let's have an honest intellectual discussion. You know, if you want to come up and just tell me I was shitty, then then yeah. that's fine. I can respect that. But yeah. that's not 
that, that that's not what we where we need to be as a society for one but as a profession we should be trying to help each other out yep. mm, absolutely you know? that's sure. why we're here that's yeah why we're here. you know i mean p- all these peer review studies they're out there all all over the place about different products and different things and at the end of the day i could care less what any of them say mm-hmm. i wanted to see what my own eyes have seen yep and i want to hear about the experiences that other people have had using that product or that service or that's awesome or whatever so yeah that's been a big pusher of me right now with what i'm lecturing about is just trying to get trying to get that aspect more more out there well that's all we're doing with the podcast you got it letting people have a voice i don't care if i agree with it or not it's that's if they agree with us or not yeah (laughs) that's the thing i tell everyone here i mean everyone here today at at, at lab tay east is successful enough to be here yeah okay so that means for me i could go talk to everyone here and they're going to have something for me to learn because they are, in their mind, successful. They're running a, you know, a uh, profitable business because yep. they've got money to be here. They're in business. You yeah. got it. Yeah. So, so there's something to be learned off everyone. Yeah, and, and, absolutely. And I don't really care if you're an Aspen Dental or anyone. It doesn't matter. We don't either. You know? So I just try to do me. Yep. <laughs> you know? You're well, you're killing you, really you Jeremiah. Yeah. You're <laughs> killing it. Thanks, Thanks for, coming for on the stopping show. by. No, thank, thank you, you so it's much. Good to meet you you were, you were on our must to talk to yeah. list when we came here yep. this weekend. So I'm glad I found you over yeah. there. Yeah, I've been me trying too. to keep my eye out. You guys haven't been here a lot. Seems yeah. like you've been out roaming around or something. Well, it's either that or we're, we're crowded. I mean, it's either, <laughs> it's weird. It's like no one's here or everybody's here. Yep. So, yeah. Awesome. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Several new Whitmix products provide laboratories with high profitability. One of them is VariaGuide OS. This new 3D print resin is a Class 1 CE certified material developed to produce the precision surgical guides used in dental implant surgery. It has been formulated for use with 3D printers using 385 and 405 nanometer light sources. The material is biocompatible, meets all mechanical property requirements, and features an easy post-production method. The bottom line is highly accurate surgical guides with a very high quality surface. VariaGuide OS can be sterilized by all methods without affecting dimensional stability, physical properties, or biocompatibility. The best part is it can be a highly profitable product offering for your lab. To learn more, check out Whitmix.com for more information. Thanks for your support of the podcast, Whitmix. So many thanks to our longtime listener, guest, and friend of the podcast, Jeremiah Nas. We love following the exciting adventure that your whole family is taking and look forward to talking to you once again when you become a denturist. I actually... I'm Facebook friends with your wife and yourself, and it looks like you guys are having an amazing time in the snow and checking out all of the sites. So good for you guys for taking that risk. And definitely, we cannot leave out Judy Fishman and all the people at LMT for allowing us to record all of the great people that attended this awesome event. Join us next week for even more conversation that we got at the LMT Lab Day East. And remember head over to dentalpodcast.org. I've only voted about 20 times, but to vote for your favorite dental-related podcast, we don't want to tell you who to vote for, but we might have a suggestion that you might want to vote for us. And then ask everybody you know to head over there to vote. Yes, yes, we're going to beg. Link to vote is easily found on the episode show notes. So please vote for Voices from the Bench. A hundred times every day. (laughs) It's real easy. (laughs) So next month, we have Visions 21 in Las Vegas, January 16th to the 18th, and Voices of Dentistry in Scottsdale, January 23rd to the 25th. Both great events Barb and I will be recording at. Head over to this episode show notes to learn more about these great events and to register. I highly suggest going to Vision 21 and checking out Voices of Dentistry. Yep. As lab people, we need to represent our industry at these events. I know I'm looking forward to Las Vegas and Scottsdale in January. As I mentioned, this Wednesday, it's only going to be a high of 22 in Indiana. (laughs) So... Yes, please. Yes, please. To Las Vegas <laughs> and Scottsdale in January. In a few weeks brings us, oh my God, decades over, 2020. 
New year, new decade, we want to hear from you. What are your plans for 2020? Do you have anything at the lab that you are hoping for, wishing for, new products that you want to get into? What's going on? Let us know. Send us an email at info at voicesfromthebench.com. Let us know your name and your lab, and we will read them in our January podcast. Let's all give inspiration to those who need it. We just thought it'd be cool for everyone to talk about what they hope and what they want to do in this new decade. Yep. Let's make our industry even better than what it is now. All right. All right, everybody. That's all we got. We'll talk to you next week. Merry Christmas. Have fun. I know it's crazy, but try to enjoy it. Bye. See ya. Okay, hold on, my wife's calling me.